We're thrilled to have with us today, Dr. Melissa Homestead, author of the new book, The Only Wonderful Things, The Creative Partnership of Willa Cather and Edith Lewis. It's currently the number one new release in LGBTQ studies on a site that shall not be named. Dr. Homestead is a professor of English, program faculty in women's and gender studies, director of the Willa Cather Project, and associate editor of the Complete Letters of Willa Cather, a digital edition at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, which is my alma mater. But it was at Smith College, Dr. Homestead's alma mater, where the spark for the only wonderful things was born. We're looking forward to hearing about Melissa's journey of researching and writing this long awaited joint biography that places Edith Lewis back at the center of Cather's life where she lived for almost 40 years. Welcome Dr. Homestead. Thank you. It's so nice to have you here. Melissa, I wanted to ask you about the pictures in the book. Mm -hmm. I love the pictures. Um, can you talk to us about how you chose them and if there were any pictures you came across that really surprised you during your research? Uh, so the pictures on the cover, which Chris has in back of her there. Um, <laughs> so uh, there, you know, it was a, a real struggle finding pictures of Edith Lewis. Um, but the picture on the cover, it's uh, Photoshop two pictures together, uh, rather than actually um, a picture that somebody else took of them together. So um, in fact, most of the pictures that I found um, were exactly that, handing the camera back and forth. Um, but the one of Edith Lewis there, um, that was in the Charles Cather collection. And I think it was five or six years ago when I found it. And, um, but I, what it was actually was um, a developed negative and there was no print. And um, they kept integrating more materials into the Charles Cather collection as his trustees kept sorting through his house, which was apparently stuff full of stuff and figuring out what stuff was properly part of his donation of that collection to our libraries. And um, I was, I just got to this. And so I would just go to the library every couple of months and see what else had appeared. Um, and I just saw there was a folder in that sort of clamshell archive box and, and I pulled it out and it was, uh, it was blue stationary paper and it was stuff with negatives. Um, and I was like, this is Edith Lewis's stationary. I recognize it. And I was just like, light box, bring me a light box. <laughs> <laughs> and so I put these on the light box and there she was. This is the greatest picture, wow. but uh, it was this, this negative and I recognized what it was. Um, and also in that collection, although it was a print when it came in, I remember opening up a folder and looking through prints and Edith Lewis on the beach in 1914 when she was visiting her college roommate in Italy. Uh, there she is in a 1914 baby costume. So, so that was a delight to find. And right away I knew what it was because that trip, I just kept finding more and more. That was just kind of like an epic making trip in her life. And I knew right from the start, she mentioned stuff about it. And some of the earliest letters uh, that came to light, a letter to uh, Oxa Barlow Brewster's daughter Harwood, where she's like, oh, I've always felt so close to you because I was right there from the beginning when you were little, mm -hmm. you know, so she was visiting. And so more and more kept coming in. So when I saw that picture, I was like, oh my God, it's the 1914 trip, she's on the beach. So <laughs> that was fun. Um, but I don't know, well, and, and just, it, it even some of the pictures, uh, the pictures of them on horseback that are on the inside of uh, the, the back jacket flap, um, those were misidentified by the first scholar to look at that book, uh, surveying copies of, the, of Cather's books for the Willa Cather Scholarly Edition is two pictures of Willa Cather. Oh, wow. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> nope, nope, that's Edith Lewis and Willa Cather. So, uh, so yeah, yeah. I mean, somewhat. I, I don't know if there are any other pictures that you were particularly thinking of that uh, that you that you liked that you were interested in. But uh, it was a, a continual process of discovery. Yeah, I just loved them. I mean, it really added to the the feel, you know. Yeah, so. if they had let me, I would have had a lot more pictures. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to say, I, I mean, it, that's what I mean. It must have been really hard to choose which one. And, and the great trick was staying within my contracted limit by having my friend Andy Jewell Photoshop pictures into one image, even when they're like separate, not making them, blurring them. But if I put them side by side, that's one picture, right? <laughs> That's how I got down to 52. 50 was actually my contracted limit, but um, yeah, so. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. 
Okay, hold on a second here. <laughs> um, yeah, that, she's never done it, but she was about to get up on open shelving with all of my Polish pottery collection. So. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think Chris had a, ca a specific cather question that must come from Chris. It can't come from oh. me. Yeah, I was just curious. Do you ever get sick of Cather? <laughs> well, you know, it's uh, in terms of the other work I do, um, when I'm working on 19th century American women novelists, popular novelists, um, I, I get annoyed at Cather for having all the cookies, as it were, in literary history and getting so much more recognition. And she's she contributed to that devaluing of some of the women who came before her. So I do get annoyed sometimes, um, but I also feel like there's so much more to know um, mm -hmm. and uh, so much more work that could uh, just, I mean, there's just so much more to do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So as long as I'm focusing on the new things to do, um, and I, I, I probably have read my Antonia, my Antonia way too many times. I should stop for a while. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of my obsession one, yeah. but, but yes, yes. Um, I, I think that the world has not paid enough attention to Cather's later short fiction, particularly obscure destiny stories. There's so little attention paid to those. And those are, um, not just because Edith Lewis, was very active in editing them. Those are just such um, beautiful stories that haven't been read enough, I think. Yeah. Well, thank you for answering that question. I know it was a rather blunt delivery, <laughs> uh, but I often wonder about that with scholars who do spend, you know, decades working on an author, if they just sometimes just have enough of them. <laughs> well, although, you know, really my book is mostly not about Willa Cather's works. Right. 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 So yeah. yes, so yeah. that um, and uh, I am kind of a contrarian by nature. And so making, you know, Willa Cather looks very different in this book than she does in any previously published biography. So in some ways, it's a different Cather. I'm not getting sick of the same one. There's a there's a there's a new Cather. <laughs> <laughs> <Right>. <laughs>